news during this event were um, New Jersey, New York Mayor Bloomberg and New Jersey um, Governor Chris Christie. So all of these people and places were involved in this event. As the event or as the hurricane evolved from 28th of October through 3rd of November, how did the importance of these people increase and decrease? So we want to uh, identify the role played by these people during the hurricane, and that's the question that our project is going to try and answer. So what is an event? Uh, what are the uh, 
events that are mentioned in those tweets, and we try to generate several uh, measures such as uh, how frequent they are being talked about and uh, how uh, how how they are uh, how, how they are popular. So to to measure that, we use uh, the the increment uh, the increase of the, the frequency over a period of time. So given a given an entity. How, how its popularity is changed over a period of time. So that also we take into uh, take into our consideration when uh, we try to rank these entries. Uh, uh, about the second point, so we wanted to see how uh, different pages or different entities related to an uh, related to an event uh, is connected. So for that we. Uh, Extracted a subgraph out of uh, uh, the uh, out of the uh, selected set of entities that are that we are interested in. Uh, in this case, uh, we we collected all uh, entities uh, that are there in uh, Hurricane Sandy page in Wikipedia, and we try to uh, generate a subgraph out of it where uh, different entities are connected uh, uh, to each other, and then we calculated hits and page rank. Uh, Scores for all these entities. Uh, the the reason for the uh, reason uh, behind uh, that experiment is to see uh, whether we can use hits for page page rank alone to uh, rank entities that uh, varies with time. The importance of the uh, entity uh, varies over time. Whether we can use uh, page rank or hits in uh, those kind of scenarios. That's why why we use that as an experiment. So uh, to discuss, uh, to explain you the architecture that we used, so uh, Wikipedia and Twitter are the uh, two data sources that we are looking into. And uh, first, uh, and we have uh, developed certain modules that uh, since uh, that that crawls uh, the Wikipedia uh, event page. In this case, Hurricane Sandy page of Wikipedia. That's what is mean, uh, that's what I referred by uh, Wikipedia event page processor. So then we uh, we also want to track how frequently these changes happen and how frequently these pages are modified. For that we have another module called Wikipedia Revision Extraction uh, Extractor. But uh, in this uh, in this uh, project uh, we did not uh, you know, plan to implement this part, but. Uh, for the sake of completion of the architecture, I put that uh, in my architecture diagram. So uh, what we do is when, when we uh, run these modules, we get uh, the, the increase in uh, page views plus uh, the increase in uh, or how frequent the revisions are made. Then we uh, gather those information to uh, uh, calculate uh, how popular a Wikipedia page is related to a uh, entity that we identify in tweets. Uh, then uh, we have a third module that uh, extracts a subgraph out of a uh, Wikipedia page. And uh, it, it uses hits and page rank uh, algorithms to uh, calculate hits and page rank scores for those entities to see how well they are connected. The, uh, the second information source we use is Twitter. As I explained to you, we use uh, keywords to track an event. So based on a set of keywords, we collect tweets. And then we try to uh, identify the entities uh, that are there in those tweets. We basically use uh, two different tools to spot entities, Wikipedia Spotlight and Tri-Spotter. Why we had to use two spotters? Uh, because uh, Wikipedia Spotlight depends on uh, the Wikipedia Spotlight depends on uh, Wikipedia, uh, so uh, Wikipedia dataset, so and Wikipedia dataset con uh, consists of a Wikipedia dump. So in the latest version of Wikipedia Spotlight, the Wikipedia dump that Wikipedia uses is uh, 2000 level August uh, Wikipedia dump. So uh, very, uh, I mean, recent changes of Wikipedia are not captured in Wikipedia in in this version of Wikipedia. Spotlight. Yeah, the new uh, no, the newest version is. Uh, I, uh, we, we 
check that because we ran into a case where Hurricane Sandy was mapped into a film mm. than the Hurricane Sandy event. So when we uh, checked what causes that, we found out that uh, it uses an old version of all uh, Wikipedia now. So then we used we use IceWater by uh, feeding all uh, entities that we see in uh, Wikipedia page. So with that, we have all uh, entities that are all general entities that are in tweets, plus all uh, specific entities that we are interested in uh, that are coming from Tricepotter. So that's how uh, we handle that scenario. So based on the uh, uh, entity occurrences, we calculate how frequently these entities being talked about in Twitter uh, on a daily basis. And for each and every day, we try to uh, calculate the increase increase in their popularity based on the number of uh, number of times they are being talked about. So considering these factors, we we use a method to aggregate all these scores and come up with a uh, ranking, which we will uh, at the end display in a timeline uh, where uh, ranking of these entities are listed in the timeline. We will uh, show that in our demonstration. So uh, this is the data. This is the sample set of data that we uh, we want wanted to uh, show you. Uh, this is for uh, October 30th. So if you see that uh, in the uh, rightmost column, we have uh, the the percentage increase of page views. So for the uh, and the top two uh, were sort of noisy data because uh, the main reason for them to be there is. Uh, is because uh, on the previous day, uh, Fox Cleveland was not being talked about, and now it has nine page views, and uh, directly uh, the, the increase of page views jumps to 100 uh, percent. So we, when you when we take the combined score, you will see these types of entities will not detect the final ranking that we uh, calculate. So. Uh, this is for the same uh, for the same day. Uh, these are the uh, the mo most uh, most we talk m most talked about entries uh, based on Twitter data. So you will see Hurricane Sandy comes up top and Red Cross being an organization. What can you do to uh, kind of uh, bias it towards uh, domain specific uh, uh, or event specific terms? For example, YouTube is not event specific term, although YouTube can be mentioned very often in the context of event like those that you have. Nevertheless, it's not something that is very meaningful uh, or, you know, or does not add much of a value. Right. Uh, so uh, is there a, some way to bias in such a way that only uh, uh, event unique uh, things, if they, if YouTube will be mentioned often even otherwise, uh, if not, even when you ignore the event per se. Right, so in this case, in this experiment, we use all entities uh, presented in our uh, Wikipedia event page. We did not do any pre-processing on that. Mm -hmm. uh, why YouTube is coming up? Because uh, related to Hurricane Sandy, there are, uh, people have referred yeah. to YouTube videos there. So if we do that pre-processing step there, at the time we extract the uh, most relevant entities from Wikipedia uh, page, uh, this won't show up. We, I mean, we did not do that uh, at this point, but uh, it can be. Uh, so you will see uh, cities like Manhattan, uh, Lower Manhattan, Queens, because uh, there was uh, there was an incident where a, a fire incident uh, on this day uh, at Queens, and uh, so that's why uh, these places are there. Uh, places are there. So. Uh, this is the uh, page rank and hits authority scores that we uh, calculated for the same set of entities. Uh, if, if you see this uh, screenshot, you will see uh, the uh, the entities that uh, comes uh, comes up in our list are general terms that that talks about uh, more general uh, places, countries, or uh, uh, persons such as. Uh, so in this case, United States comes uh, way up. So the the purpose of having this slide is to show that uh, at, 
and uh, purpose of running this ex experiment is to show that uh, we keep uh, sorry page rank for hits alone cannot be used to uh, rank uh, entities that we that varies with uh, where they are important important varies with time. So this is the uh, combined score that we generated based on the Wikipedia scores and uh, Twitter scores that we calculated. Uh, so uh, when we uh, order the entities descending, descendingly, so you see uh, places like Lower Manhattan, uh, Manhattan, Queens are there at the top. And in this list, you don't see uh, the, uh, the entities uh, that, I, that I showed you earlier. Fox channel, and uh, so when you combine these two scores, you can have a m have more meaningful. Why is it in things like uh, Texas and Ohio? And so Texas was one of the states that was. Uh, I mean, Texas sent rescue teams to. Um, oh, I see. Well, would it be possible to uh, uh, more uh, do it with, to actually get more like Texas? Rescue team was it versus Texas as such? So one of my Just goals Texas was to, to use the, uh, the revision module that you talked about would extract the revision text from the Wikipedia event page and uh, do some sort of text processing on that to get the summary of that text revision. Mm -hmm. So if we were to accomplish that, then that would give why a particular entity was there. So with te the Texas, you would probably see a rescue team or some other text. Mm -hmm. search terms based on the search volume for a particular day. So here uh, you can see uh, in Google Trends for October 30th, Lower Manhattan was a very popular search term. Uh, and Queens County is a little bit lower than um, a little uh, lower than uh, Lower Manhattan and Hurricane Sandy is even lower. So if you see uh, the results list that we we came up with uh, it has lower Manhattan as the top result, uh, Queens in the uh, within the first six, and you don't see Hurricane Sandy here. So, uh, so uh, the idea of this slide is to uh, show that uh, we also get similar results based on our method. That so, so basically, our results lines with. Why don't you say you send it there? So, uh, because, uh, so the, your question is why? Why don't we have hurricane send there? Oh, it should be. Uh, it, it should be there, but way below because uh, hurricane send was very uh, popular uh, on the 28, 29, and uh, when it comes to 30th, uh, we we get a lot of tweets that talks about other cities. Then Hurricane Sandy. So uh, if you look at, uh, if you look, uh, if you look at the full, uh, okay. So if you look at the uh, Twitter trends only, it is there. But uh, when you combine it with uh, Wikipedia page views, since uh, since there are uh, other places where people. Uh, mostly talked about. So, and when you combine these scores, uh, we can beat, uh, sorry, Hurricane Sandy does not show up as the topmost results. Uh, and uh, it aligns with the uh, Google Trends for the same day, so. Yeah, so these are the things that we learn in terms of technology and research and experiment. We basically played with uh, Twitter and Wikipedia APIs. We, uh, we use uh, NTD spotters like Wikipedia spotter, Price spotter. We also looked into uh, page ranking algorithms like Kids and Page Rank. Uh, in terms of technology, we use Java JavaScript similarly to uh, design the timeline and Apache Tomcat as a server. Uh, we, as research experiments, we did uh, experiments on how Wikipedia page views can uh, affect uh, ranking of popular entities or to find popular entities, how Twitter entities, uh, popular, uh, how uh, popularity of uh, Twitter entities changes over time. So we can quickly 
beginning of the Bush administration. and some diseases 
and symptoms. Okay. So let's say this is the condition that we are struggling with to uh, figure out whether that person has or has not. So uh, our idea is to let's say if you take this medic if you take this medication from the knowledge base, what we will be able to do is this medication can be used to treat this disease and also these two diseases as well. But if you take this medication, uh, from the knowledge base, what we know is this can be only used to treat uh, this uh, particular uh, condition, not all these things. So our intuition is, from this kind of evidence, what we can say is, okay, this medication, the link of this medication for this disease has higher strength than the this medication. So the problem we problem with those things is um, even though you can have the links, you cannot really say that whether it's a cure, whether it's a prevent, whether it's a side effect and all these things, right? So because of those things, we got the insight after analyzing the results with the domain expert. Uh, because of those things, our results were not that good uh, because we didn't address the actual relationship thing. Uh, okay. So, after getting that insight, we decided, okay, we cannot really uh, get all the entities from the one document and link them to, we need to really concentrate on the statements and go to the sentences, and if the sentence says that this patient, uh, sorry, this medication is uh, uh, being prescribed because of this condition, then only we can get that, that relationship, rather than just uh, uh, depending on the knowledge base itself. So we try to uh, 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 get this thing done. Uh, so, right, so the pseudocode for extracting these entities and relationships is as follows. So the first thing that we do is we extract a sentence. So we start from the beginning and whenever we find a period, we extract that sentence. And then we extract entities, which in this case is uh, medications and conditions. So if both are present in, uh, in the neighborhood of each other, then we extract that and we query the database for possible relationships. If it's not, then we extract the next statement and try to find out the same thing. So we keep on looping through until we have some sort of relationships or no relationships. And then we validate it by going online and maybe checking if what we found is correct or not. So some of the examples which we got spot on were these three, and it says here hypertension currently controlled. It is actually a little bit on the low side, and he, if he has any symptoms of dizziness, we could decrease his norvasic to 5 mg. So we are saying here that yes, this is actually treating hypertension. So that is correct. This does not treat dizziness because it's a symptom. It is not supposed to treat the dizziness issue. So we got that correct too. And the thing to notice here is the because of you have the knowledge base, we, we were able to uh, say that pharmacy is not uh, uh, treatment for dizziness; it is for hypertension. Right. So again, the next one that we have is for his hypertension. We'll continue lisinopril, HCT, and metoprolol. So we were again able to. Can you um, can you argue from straight forward uh, she takes uh, that it would not have been possible to do this? Or CTX or without CTX? If, if, you know, if you use CTX and uh, you, you know, there is no way you could yes. have really done without using the background knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. right. So uh, this would be another example where we got everything correct. And then the next one. And why is that important? Uh, that you would have gotten uh, uh, because the uh, no pill SCT uh, treats hypertension. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. There are two different things. Uh, there are two medications and... Uh, so he's actually taking two medications for one problem, which yeah, yeah. wouldn't have been possible. Mm. And then the next one where we disapprove that you know this medication is not used for chest pain is because we were able to find out that they are actually talking about a stress test with the medication, so it's not supposed to treat chest pain at all. Then we also have some negative results. We were, for some reason, not able to conclude that for aortic insufficiency, uh, Dioman is a proper medication. It's so either because of the 
because there's probably a relationship in the background that is missing. Then, for some reason, we so were this is a, a lack of adequate knowledge base. Yes. Is that yes. Okay? So the next is even interesting. It says for his cardiomyopathy, continuous pyrenoloctone furosemide attacking. We weren't able to identify these because the term cardiomyopathy is uh, very general. It includes heart failure, heart angina. So we cannot go that back to a generalized term because that wouldn't make sense. This is medication for a very specific purpose, it treats heart failure. So in this case, saying that it treats cardiomyopathy is not right. And then the next one we have is- Can't you, can't you uh, say possibly does because it is still a subtype of uh, cardiomyopathy? And the thing is, uh, heart failure and all these things are not subtype of uh, cardiomyopathy. I see. That's kind of a separate grouping, I think. Some domain specific grouping, it's not uh, easily. I think this, this is an interesting point, you know, I think we need to think, think about something, what can be done. And then the third point, which was even further interesting, was the fact that we found in this case, hypertension, consider switching from cardiovascular to enderol. So in this case, uh, we had a debate about it, should we actually consider it as a treatment? Because it seems like for this patient, this cardiovascular is not working. So sh it, it is supposed it's to say it is working, but uh, it is well controlled, so Indal is uh, milder, uh, and so you want to move to that. So no, we had a couple of cases where they would say that it's not working well, switch to this. So in those cases, although medication is supposed to treat that problem, we cannot conclusively say that well, mm. it's not working for this individual. So well, perhaps we need to look at their whole family history and mm -hmm. those kinds of things, mm -hmm. allergy, and then now we have some more challenges and limitations. Entity identification was an issue. For some reason, we were able to identify PAC. Mm -hmm. CTEX yeah, didn't identify it properly. We had PAC as medication, perform as medication, so it was throwing our That's what CTEX gave you? Mm -hmm. And then we, we realized that the approach we have taken, if we have everything in one big paragraph, all the problems and all the drug mentions, we weren't getting concrete and nice results. And then again, I guess we are talking about uninterpretable results where they're talking about switching from one to another medication, but clearly we cannot categorize it ourselves, like what is wrong, why should this medication be stopped, these kind of issues. Then the result, uh, so we had 119 relationships and out of that, we were correctly able to identify 62. We were correctly able to reject 24. And we had some false positives because of the previous reason and some false negatives. So overall, our accuracy is sort of up from about seven to eight percent. Uh, conclusion and future work. I guess it is safe to say the knowledge base that we were using is, is rich enough to interpret these documents and we can perhaps use this knowledge base to identify more relationships. One of the things that- How would you classify that? How would you argue that this would be adequate? Um, the knowledge base? Hmm? The knowledge base adequate? No, the results uh, 72%. Uh, so, 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 within the knowledge base, we deal with the real world uh, data, right? Oh. So, we- No, the results are, Personally, it sounds okay by itself. I'm just saying, how do you, uh, as, as, a, as a computational technique, it sounds okay. Mm -hmm. How do you argue that it has uh, practical use at that level of accuracy? Uh, it depends on what kind of application you are talking about. If we are talking about real use critical application, that 28% that is not clear capturing may affect. Mm. If it is just analysis kind of thing, mm. then uh, with this result, we can go ahead. Mm. So another thing that we noticed that would probably help us is if we know side effects and put them in the knowledge base because a lot of a lot of the problems like dizziness and vomiting can actually be also referred to a problem. So if we know that this is a side effect of a certain medication, then we can disregard or map it to the proper medication. Mm -hmm. So I guess we can now do a quick demo. So I had a question. What is what is it about the algorithm that made big paragraphs a problem? Because you guys did the segmentation uh, of sentences. The thing so. is, when, when the doctor writes big paragraphs, uh, 
he writes so many things. Let's say if it is short sentence, what you normally have is okay, you have this condition and I'm, the maximum complexity is I'm switching this thing. Oh, it does not work. So does not thing we can uh, the C test capture as a negative thing. But when it comes to paragraph, he will write okay, this this person was taking this medication and it has this effect and because of that I uh, prescribe uh, in the last visit I prescribed this medication and now it's giving this product. So so many complicated complicated story. Mm -hmm. In that case, you will really uh, have hard time connecting uh, these things. But is, just by looking is at there the some notion of template? The kind of high level linguistic structures that you might find and then you try to feed into that based on some causative uh, you know thing or uh, you know line of thought kind of stuff. The the data set is really diverse. It is diverse. So but the kind of things that doctors uh, would try yes, to sir. achieve uh, in a broader sense saying well, uh, at a higher level, a doctor has a certain thought process about talking about some medication working, not working well enough. Mm -hmm. um, so these are the high level concepts, not just limited to identifying of entity correctly or not. Mm -hmm. And if you could understand that, that uh, the concept here is talking about medication working, consists about uh, ordering a lab test. Um, there is the concept of um, Communication theory called action uh, something I forgot now. So um, uh, speech action, speech action, speech action theory kind of thing. So it was a high level uh, you know paradigm for talking about conversation. In this case, doctor has a high level thought process. So it, it, you can say it, 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 that if I can identify a particular sentence or to to deal with a particular kind of thought process that doctor has of ordering medication, changing the medication, ordering a test, uh, uh, talking about uh, symptom being this thing, mm -hmm. um, ordering the longer plan, see all this, and if you classify that level mm -hmm. and use that as a mechanism to further improve your understanding, that could be something. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? one we got 
a lot of this stuff wrong because again the fact that cardiomyopathy is too high level and there's no point of traversing this much. So that's why our results there are incorrect. Mm. And this is the last one where we have something simpler. So you have hyperlipidemia where they mentioned switching from provestatin to zocor. So we have that correct. And the rest of the stuff is also correct in this case. Any questions?
standard identifier like uh, it's used for uh, filtering out. Uh, so this identifier is filtering out whether that will be saying in English or not, and uh, it's extract the URL. Article extraction means the uh, whatever the URL at there. So we extract the data from the URL pages. Hashtag extractor text processor for extracting nouns and adverbs. Uh, right now we are using DBpedia, but uh, we are in future we are going to use uh, MetaMap for finding out the domain specific uh, entities for particular health related information. Here this component performs some analysis on uh, whatever the data has come for informative analysis purpose. And we are using uh, page ranking for like, uh, even we are using Google to find out the page rank. We are using Twitter's how many times the, this URL has been shared or not. So we are using this component to extract the data and storing into the database. So this component is talk about this. So these are the our pipelines data. So these are the descriptions. I've already explained about it. So even this author information board, so this information even extract whether uh, the person who has tweeted about particular health information, how much we can consider as a, like it's whether reliable or not. So we are using description about the author and finding out that whatever the like, let's suppose he is a consultant in diabetes part. So we are finding that the keyword is consultant is there or diabetes is there. So we can find out about uh, the author is reliable or not. Uh, to extracting the, like as we told you, right now we are extracting the entities. So this is one of the result of the PDI extraction. This is a cancer. So this is entity extraction part. Okay. So uh, this is third part, uh, uh, third part of architecture. So after we extract the data and uh, store it into the database, we are performing some informative analysis. So right now we have two approach, first is automatic and second is manual. Or we can say it's, uh, so right now for demo purpose, uh, what we did like, uh, we did a find, we go, gone through the 6,000 tweets and find out whether these uh, tweets are informative or not. So we label the data. But uh, we are in future, we are planning like, uh, to, uh, to identify whether the tweet is informative or not is automation pro process. So we, as we mentioned in the storm part, we have collected all kinds of parameters whether the URL is page ranks, uh, hashtags are, are available or not. So we have all parameters, we, but only we have to develop an algorithm which can give a precise information whether this tweet is informative or not. So, and we can compare these tweets whatever we did here is labeling. So we have a comparison evaluation for also. And second part is uh, extraction uh, patterns logic. So yeah, so we have uh, done PQL processing, which we, where we deploy big insights project, which, ha which helps us, which is a text analytics basically, which helps us to extract uh, structured data from unstructured text like social media. So for the purpose of uh, informative analysis, we have done labeling as getting only health-related data, can, uh, categorizing as diabetes or cancer-related, and then setting an informative score between one to four for them. And then the next part is pattern uh, implementation, where uh, we, pa we, uh, we implement patterns of this sort, saying that X, Y, and Z, where uh, something Something controls the disease, but it can, uh, it can be a form for drug or some kind of a method they're using. And uh, so we have done it on these basis. We have gone through the tweets and we are uh, able to say that patterns occur in a particular format. Well, and these are, and those are. Uh, what are informative uh, patterns and what, what kind of things are not informative? So, uh, for the purpose of the demo, we have implemented a very crude implementation right now because uh, we just want to show how the look and feel is. We are saying that we want to implement question and answer format. And, uh, and we said that we're going to come up 
how to control cancer. So these uh, patterns coming from uh, unstructured data, which we have we got from others, like Goku, which child may have movement with lung cancer, exercise and driving, up early life, metastatic breast cancer. So these are the kind of, uh, all information related with how to control cancer we are getting via Twitter's and these are the ID. Suppose if you want to know yeah. like what they are discussing about, so they can click on this and they can come up with uh, what are the tags have been shared and what is the URL and the content of the URL as well. So they can go through this whole thing and user can go through this. Yes. And even like what causes
question or the basic idea about the work is uh, work relies on this uh, concept called entity set, which I uh, involved uh, previously in the last last quarter. So the entity set means we in the RB we have set of entities. What are from the entity set what we define is we try to identify a set of entities which share similar characteristics. So for an example, when we have a graph like this, we would identify these uh, these three instances as a one one entity, and so the entity would be URI instances, and one set would be described by certain characteristics. These characteristics are the ones which we can found out at the schema level. So for an example, to give about the idea about the characteristics that we are using, let's say the class class is one characteristic. So for an example, when we have uh, these uh, we'll try to group them, okay, this is one and this is two belonging to one set, uh, one entity set, and gene one, gene two, gene three belonging to another entity set. So the same goes with the URI pattern. So as you can see, the first two instance to instances share a same prefix pattern, while the last three share a uh, different prefix pattern. So in those cases, we we'll try to group them separately. So these uh, entities, in, in this case, this one and this is two, in this case, these three genes and these two. We identify these, se these things as a separate set of entities, what we call entity set. So in addition to those two, we are using incoming properties, that mean, uh, which are the set of entities which has the same incoming property and same outgoing property. And also, when we have a subject, predicate, and object, we will try to see whether we can group the objects into a particular class. Uh, and if it is a data type property, we try to identify what can be the uh, object that means whether it's an integer, whether it's a string, or something like that. And then how are we going to do it? So first of all, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we'll first of all identify the different entity set based on the characteristic that we identified. And then it's, I'll give a detailed uh, description about each step later. So in order to give ideas, so I first of all I'll identify the different entity sets, and then I'll try to combine it, and then I'll try to create the relationships and cardinalities between them, and finally give RDA representations for machine readable information, and then present uh, notations that we how we can present in a diagram for integer set diagrams. So when we come to the first step, I'd like to uh, describe the whole thing using example without. Uh, assume that these are the few triples that I have in the data set. So based on the class, I identify this is one and this is two belong to one group, g1 and g2 belong to another group, and then I get the outgoing property. So you, as you can see, there are two properties. Uh, this is subtype of an associated gene, and I get the associated gene, and I see what are the instances that has associated gene as outgoing property. So as you can see, this is one and this is two are there. I have a simplistic question. Mm -hmm. um, you know Google set? Mm -hmm. You give a bunch of terms and you to uh, you know, put them into different sets. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Are we going to create 
completely non-overlapping entities here, or are we going to allow overlapping sets as well? In order to make the clarity, I decided to go with this option, but I'm um, thinking of considering the other option that means uh, overlapping are okay. It doesn't matter whether it's overlapped or not, how do we give the more meaningful dialogue? But for the moment, my focus is to get the non-overlapping entities. And in order to do that, I use some user configurations as well, which I will describe you in a detail later. So now when we come to this point, we have these, uh, these things that we obtained from the previous step. And if we consider this as the whole set of instances, so what I would do is, first of all, I get the class, and then, if, so if I consider the class, it is clear that this is one, this is two, we go there, and uh, G part will be going there. And then I consider the outgoing property. So the user configuration gives us the order of the characteristics that I can use. That means whether you first use the class, outgoing property, incoming property, or if this is a data set which does not have type information, but if the data set uh, relies on the URI patterns, for an example, there is the bio to R, bio to RDF data set is a very well known for the healthcare purposes. Even though that they don't force so many constraints on the schema, what they do is they, uh, they, they, they strictly follow a unique namespaces for different databases. For example, if, the, if it is decision, they strictly follow that they should have the decision part, decision namespace over there. So in those cases, we are getting good results if we prioritize the URI first. So this configuration, uh, so uh, we give a default configuration for the system, but if the user is not satisfied with the way how the structure is produced, they can always change it and see whether what would be the ultimate outcome. So, then we'll get the outgoing property. So if, if you consider first this one, as you can see, this is completely can be replaced with the first one. And then we'll get the this is subtype of, then you can see it is a, a sub, subtype of this particular class and it will divide like that and so on. So this is how we do the integration. And, but when we are dealing with it in this way, if it is a very large data set, and if there are so many decisions like that, the diagram can be too messy. So in order, in order to avoid that, we use a similarity measure. So uh, the idea of using a similarity measure is in the default case, it won't, if there is any similarity, system will further decompose the entity set that it has. The idea of uh, introducing a similarity measure is if the user want more specific results, it doesn't matter the number of entity sets we generated. That means ideally, it doesn't matter if the diagram is too large, but it, it, if the user wants the complete results, uh, we put the uh, similarity as 0, 0.0. But if the user wants more general results with the less number of entity sets, then he can increase the similarity. So this is also given in the configuration file, and you can change the configuration and do it. So once you go uh, from 0, 0.0 to 1, it will, it will reduce the number of I gave an example here, for example, uh, in here we have, this is one and this is two over here, and then we have this uh, entity set which has uh, the outgoing property uh, something. As you can see, if we calculate the Descartes coefficient, so Descartes coefficient is calculated by getting the intersection and divided by union. As you can see, the, if, if we compare these two entity sets, the similarity would be 0.5. So if uh, user give the zero point, uh, user give the similarity score greater than 0 0.5, this will not be decomposed. Otherwise, it will be uh, decomposed the original entity set into two. So that is the idea of uh, introducing the similarity measure in order to avoid the, uh, in order to have a more clean diagram, uh, depending on the user's interest. And then finally, we create the relationships. So when we are doing the algorithm, the hierarchical relationships, they are already being created during the process of generation. Uh, but uh, domain relationships are not uh, have not been created. So in order to do that, I'm using some property-based indexes in virtual, so I'm not going to describe that into detail. So I'm using, using those properties 
security uh, based indexes and considering the features or their an example there is no point of uh, even consider comparing the two things if they don't have these outputs if this one has a output property this is subtype of this one should have something called incoming incoming property of this is subtype of so there are constraints like that and also using the property based indexes i'm um, uh, creating the domain relationships and then i'll come to the cardinality i'll try to give uh, some measure about the cardinality in between uh, yeah so whether we need to see whether every gene has a y to rtf symbol or whether it's unique or not so i'm
said, not very large scale. We don't know what we what happens when we run it on a very large data set like Wikipedia. So we need to think about this as well. Especially because in the relationship creation, since we are using property based indexes, we need to think about it. So that's good. Okay. All right. So we are ready for the next class then? Who wants to? Uh, I think we're getting. So everybody else ready for the next class? Right? I think you should be able to handle the next class.